The Tiger men's basketball team just accomplished something that hasn't happened since George Bush the first was president and I had hair. The Tiger basketball report starts now. For an athlete, there's nothing scarier than a torn ACL. Athletes trust us with their care and their careers because we're a recognized leader in sports medicine. Get back to your active life sooner with MedStar Sports Medicine. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years to Wise Markets, and, and I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome fans to another edition of the Tiger Basketball Report. I'm your host, Spiro Marikas, along with the head coach of the Tigers, Pat Scary. Well, they traveled down to Fort Myers, Florida for the Gulf Coast Showcase, and the Tigers didn't win once, didn't win twice. They won three times and brought home the trophy as Towson wins its first in-season tournament since the Battle of the Beltway in 1990. Coach, not one of your players was born the last time the Tigers won an in-season tournament, and I think one of your assistants and your director of basketball operations weren't born either. Congratulations. It was a great week down in the Sunshine State. Thanks, Phil. You know, happy for our players, our program, our, our athletic department, our university. I think it's, it was a Good tournament, good experience. I think something that's going to benefit us moving forward. So we're, you know, we haven't played in many of these. And now we're, we're, we did the Charleston Classic a couple of years ago. And I think, um, you know, we, we're in, in one next year. And we're going to try to stay in those moving forward. That there's a, It's a really good thing, three games in three days. And especially when that's what you're getting ready for at the end of the season for the conference and tournament. it's really great when you win. Now, the, the impressive thing was, over those three games, you had six different players scoring double digits. So it's continuing to show that this is a true team, that you're not relying on one guy, that it could be anybody any night. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's what, you know, the sacrifice piece, it's a little bit of a mantra behind the scenes. We, we've got to stay with it. We've got a lot of good players that bring different set of skills to the table first, and you need different guys on different nights. So I'm, I'm, I was proud of the guys. Uh, I said, you know, over three days, it was a good trip. It was a fun trip. Um, they, they can be long trips, but, but, but I think they can be very rewarding. In the first game against Florida Atlantic, you got out to an early lead and, and never really were, were threatened late in the ball game or in the second half. Uh, you had to be pleased with the way the team came out, and Zane Martin was on fire that night. Yeah, I thought that was the best game we played overall. Um, we, we were really cooking, um, and you saw some of those like spurts. That we had a couple of those like ten-two spurts that really opened up the ball game. And you know, they're a they're a team that's in a good league in Conference USA, you know, and had just lost at the buzzer to South Florida of the American Conference. So it was to to beat them handily was a good win for us. Then game two against Penn, completely different story. Penn jumps out to a ten-point lead early on. But you guys regrouped, you, you got it together, you had a lead at halftime. You had actually built up the lead in the first half, but then Penn came back late to make it close at halftime. 
And then in the second half, you, you basically led throughout. But in this game, Mike Morsell came through. Brian Starr came through. Yeah, and Penn's good. Steve Dunhue's done a really good job. They're good. I mean, they just beat Monmouth. They should have beat LaSalle. Um, they won two games down there. They're, they're going to be a, a team that contends for an Ivy League championship. I, I thought when we played the game, I wasn't that happy with it. But then watching on film, I, 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 I thought, you know, we played better than I, than I realized. Penn, Penn got a good club. And uh, Star really, all weekend long, kind of like set the table for us, made big shots, took care of the ball, knocked down free throws, and played outstanding defense. Then in the championship game, Georgia Southern, um, it was tight throughout most of the ball game. Eddie Keith comes up with a huge three-point play late in that ball game. And this is a guy who statistically, he doesn't show up every night, but he just does things that, that I know you love. Yeah, he's incredibly tough. Um, he can, you know, want to make you pull you, if you had any, pull your hair out at times. But he is, uh, he's tough, he's skilled, he's talented. He, he helps us in a lot of ways that don't always show up in statistics, but they do in winning ball games. And Mike made some big, big plays down the stretch. Uh, Georgia Southern's very good, uh, probable Sunday. They were undefeated. Champion. Yeah, until... very good team. They beat Wake Forest, I think. We were up 14 with 15 minutes ago. Then I thought that was we had our worst stretch. Um, we played poorly for about 10 minutes and we're down five. But then the kids showed great resiliency in coming back, be able to win the ball game. You think that's a good thing that that when when Georgia Southern came back, took the lead. I know you hated it at the time, but going forward, that could help that you were down and the team showed that they could come back to win. Well, yeah, that piece, yes. Now I'd like it to be that we have that resiliency, but we don't have those bad spurts. Right. You know, uh, that's. I try to tell them that after the game, like, we're searching for the perfect game. It's never going to happen, probably, but that's what we're searching for. Now it's like, you know, how many good minutes are we, right now, are we playing 23 really good minutes, 24, you know, we got to keep getting closer to 40 to reach the ultimate goal. Then uh, on Monday night, you come home after the, the championship and you take on St. Mary's and you win this game handily, uh, a game where you were able to get a couple of your freshmen, Travis Ingram, who has been playing, and Jeffrey Prophet a lot more playing time than they normally get. I know that's important for you to get those guys in the mix. Well, Travis especially, I think we've got to he's, – he's going to help us win some games in conference right now. So we've got to figure out how to get him more minutes. I think he's – that's not easy for either of those two guys. They used to play a lot. Um, but they're on a good team, and if, if they buy their time and keep working, then they'll get to where they want to get. You look at guys like – Tunstall and McNeil and Zane Martin and Justin Gorham, they had to buy their time a little bit too. And, and now they, they're major impact guys. So it's got to be patient. Um, and Jeff too, I think I told you, Jeff's played better in practice. He's playing a difficult position, but to, to help us moving forward, he's got to be uh, a true quarterback all the time. And he scored his first collegiate points against St. Mary's on Monday night. So the only sad news that came out of the Florida trip is that uh, if you've ever watched the episode of Seinfeld where he was uh, confronted by one of his high school t uh, classmates that he cheated in a running race, Coach Scary and I had a water slide race, and I'm sad to report that Coach Scary left before the guy said go. So a tainted victory for Coach Scary in our water slide race. We'll never know. We'll never know. That'll do it for this episode of the Tiger Basketball Report. Tune in later this week. We'll talk about the Tigers' first ever trip to play in Europe. For head coach Pat Scary, I'm Spiro Marikas. As always, go Tigers.